Hello, welcome to Talk Back, the podcast, with me, William Crawley. It's been another bad week for the royal family, with Buckingham Palace in full damage limitation mode, following shocking allegations in US court documents that Prince Andrew took part in sex parties with underage girls at the homes of Jeffrey Epstein, an American billionaire friend who was subsequently convicted of child sex offences. Yesterday, the Duke of York, who strongly denies those allegations, returned from a ski holiday in Switzerland, where he'd been staying in a luxury chalet costing £22,000 a week. Add to all of that the fact that members of the royal family are protected by laws preventing the press finding out details of their correspondence with the government. And for some people at least, it's a worse than embarrassing state of affairs for a modern democracy. Tell us what you think about all of that. Have you lost pride in the royal family, if you ever had any? Uh, The author and independent columnist Joan Smith is with us at this lunchtime. How are you doing, Joan? Oh, Joan's not with us yet. We can go to Kate Nickel, the the Mail on Sunday's royal correspondent. Hello, Kate. Hello, William. Katie, nice good to, to talk you to you. Good afternoon, hi. How damaging, Katie, do you think this uh, this week has been for the royal family? Uh, well, look, you know, it, it's been a great week for Republicans. I'll put it that way. Um, and, yeah, it has been very damaging. Um, it, it's, it's not the news that the royal family would have wanted 2015 to kick off with. Um, Prince Andrew, as you say, has been skiing with his family. He's come back to face the music, and it's not the sort of music I think anyone would want to face. Um, I think there is still a lot of outstanding questions and in fact I I was on the Lorraine show this morning and uh, I was looking through the papers and the Daily Mail have actually put together 10 questions that they think Buckingham Palace should answer and I think they're very well thought out questions but but as you as you pointed out in 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 your um in your little bit before you know this is a royal family who are exempt from the freedom of information they don't have to answer questions that they don't want to answer um they have given comments on this story I think there have been three official comments on the record they've said there will not be any more and that's pretty Um, unprecedented in itself isn't it well it is it is unprecedented um, and I think that does show we're not just getting a standard brush off with a no comment, which I think in the old days is something that we might have expected. Well, it also shows they're firefighting. Listen, there is absolutely a firefighting um, operation in process. I mean, look, let's remember that um, Prince Andrew has denied these allegations in this country. We are innocent until we're proven guilty. Um, but you're, you're absolutely right. The, 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 the PR machine at the palace, which is a very powerful very clever, very dynamic machine is in full swing and and there's no argument about that. Joan Smith, as I say, is the independent columnist. Her new book is titled Down With The Royals, which Joan gives us a sense of your perspective on this. It does, yes. Uh, Do you think this has been so damaging this week for the royal family that it will turn public opinion against them? I don't think that one single thing ever has the power to turn the public against them in the long term. I think it's very damaging for two reasons. One is that Prince Andrew is somebody who has really poor judgment in the kind of people he has as friends and associates, um, not just this particular guy but um, who's, a, who's a, a convicted sex offender, but um, you know, um, being prepared to have meetings with all kinds of oligarchs and the relatives of um, despots around the world. Um, so he his, his judgment is poor to begin with. But the second reason it's damaging is the lack of accountability because normally if you have somebody who's involved in an alleged scandal of, or something like that, the, the, there is always a possibility that they can step down, they can retire, they can, set, they, can, they can make a statement and say, you know, they want to spend more time with their family or whatever. The royal family doesn't have that option because whatever happens, Prince Andrew remains fifth in line to the throne. So he is somebody who, you know, in, in the case of some kind of catastrophic accident, might even be head of state. And so the fact that there is no way for the family to... To, to, to deal with this this kind of scandal because because that is set in stone. I think that's the long term political problem. Katie Nichol, couldn't uh, Prince Andrew bring legal action? Uh, well, yes, he could, he could bring legal action. I, I just um, hi, Jen. It's, it's good to be on with you, hi. and I, I agree exactly with what you're saying about the poor judgment. But um, I, I think, and I understand the point you're making. But you remember back in 2011 when Andrew's friendship with Epstein was revealed, and there was that quite famous photograph of them walking together in Central Park. There was an absolute furore after that, and actually, that that really resulted in in the Duke of York stepping down as the official UK trade envoy. So yes, he will always remain 
fifth in line to the throne. But his his position has changed and and evolved, and you know you may see it change yet. So I, I think there is an element of fluidity to it. Um, but uh, I think that's just a point worth making. If you were the Queen, Katie, what advice would you have given your 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 son Andrew? Well, I think it's a bit late for advice now. And, and He's never taken it before. Age, you, you would have thought that he would have learned from past lessons. And, and Joan's quite right. There has been poor judgment along the way. I mean, this is not the first time that Andrew's been embroiled in a scandal. It's certainly the most serious scandal he's been embroiled in but you know there have been there have been girlfriends along the way i mean you only need to to remember that first love coup stark and of course she'd appeared in all those soft you know soft porn flick and there only recently there were there was a model who'd been linked with george clooney and actually in that instance prince andrew's um aides were forced to deny that there'd been an engagement there was that whole picture of a ring on twitter and all that speculation so I think it's a bit late for advice. You think if he doesn't know at his age, is he ever going to learn? Joan, this has all the elements of a, of a soap opera and, and an episodic <laughs> one at that. But we have to remind ourselves we're also talking about people who have a constitutional role within Britain. That's yes, and the problem is that it gets talked about in terms of a soap opera. And if you're not involved in it, I mean, I'm, I'm sure some people pick up the papers and they head, find the headlines quite, you know, seductive and amusing. But it actually has. A, there's a political problem and the political problem about the monarchy is its unaccountability and the fact that these people don't actually live in the same world as the rest of us so um, Prince Andrew spends a huge amount of taxpayers money on flying around the world um, on one occasion he went on a, a, um, an official trip to Teesside in Northern Ireland where you are now and he charged the taxpayer over £10,000 to hire a plane and his, his, his elder brother Prince Charles he went on a mission to the Middle East and Africa in 2000 2011 with Camilla and they did it entirely by chartered flights and it cost taxpayers £460,000 at a time when people in this country are on zero hours contracts when people are losing their jobs. Life is very hard for people and because this family is unaccountable they've never really felt that they have to think about how that looks to the rest of us because they know that we can't get rid of them and that's the political problem. Katie, with the best will in the world, even though you're a, a supporter of monarchy, mm. are you losing sympathy for, for, for this family? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not losing sympathy. And I think Joan's right in that it, it, it's going to take more than one episode to, to lose entire sympathy. And I think you only need to look at the Queen. And, and I think she has done amazing work. I mean, it's this September, isn't it, that, that she will... I think, privately celebrate, because I don't know whether there are plans for a national celebration, that she, she will succeed Queen Victoria as the longest-serving monarch. And I, I think there's a huge amount to celebrate uh, about this family, and, you know, that we'll always have the, the monarchists versus the Republicans over how relevant they are. Um, I do think that we're in an age now where, and I, and I, I write about this in, in, in my latest book, Kate, the future queen, and you look at the younger royal generation and you see what they're doing and how they're doing it differently. And I think the point is, that while modernisation is a hard word to use with the monarchy, it does need to mod- it does need to modernise. I think things do need to change. I mean, you know, Joan threw out some figures just then, but actually, you, you, you can you can look at stats in many ways, and you actually argue, well, you know what? It costs each of us something like sixty pence a year. That's nonsense. To have a royal Absolute family. nonsense. Yes, complete Andrew nonsense. Has taken expensive flights. We look at William and Kate. Um, when I travelled with them recently in their trip to New York, they flew on scheduled flights. They don't charter planes in the same way that Andrew and and Charles do. So I think things are changing and I think things are moving in the right direction. But of course, all it takes is an episode like this to drag all the all the bad PR back up again. And and, and Air Miles, Andrew, you know, all of those headlines will be being clicked on hundreds and thousands of times on Google. And yes, it does do damage to the royal family. Joan, you're challenging the 60p a day. Absolutely. The figure that Katie is talking about excludes huge costs, like it includes it excludes the entire cost of security for the Queen and all her relatives. And we are not allowed to know that that figure. It's secret. Um, Republic, have the organisation which campaigns for an elected head of state, they think the actual cost of the monarchy is not, isn't, isn't 35 million. It's more, it's more, it's more like two, 200 million. But, you know, this, this, this institution cannot modernise. Once the Queen dies, which she will eventually, um, the next three heads of state of this country are white, male, 
um, men who 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 are there because because they they've inherited the position. I I vote in every possible election I can. I love voting. I choose. I I'm, I take part in the process of choosing my local councillor, my MP, and hence the government of the day. I have never in my life been allowed a choice of who I would like to represent this country on the public stage. There are all kinds of people: people who aren't white, people who aren't necessarily heterosexual, people who represent you know the diverse country that that we now live in. And we can't have that. We, the next three heads of state of this country for the next century are going to be three white men. And there's nothing modern about that. Katie, I know you have to leave us. Thank you very much for your time. That's Katie Nickel from The Mail on Sunday, their royal correspondent. Uh, we'll bring some more guests into this conversation in a moment. 08459 555 678 for your calls. You're texting on 81771. Mervyn, good afternoon. You're up first, Mervyn. Hi, William. Are you losing pride in the monarchy? Very much so. Very, very much so. Just, just thinking about things. There are about twenty-two thousand pound a night and flights all around the world, and all fair play. But I mean, it's quite obvious that we have a lot of food banks in this country. We have people unemployed and getting it hard through no fault of their own. Uh, people haven't had a pay raise in four or five years. I just think it's time the Queen was just to sit down and say, right, this is it. We have to start living in the real world because what this Andrew has done, and I, and I hope and pray it's not right. It, that he's completely innocent. But at the end of the day, there's something there. The man's judgment is not good. Who in his position is going to walk about Central Park in New York with a convicted paedophile, irrespective of, of how much money he has or doesn't have? I think it's his judgment. I think he needs to take time out. Mervyn, thank you very much. James Gray is from Republic. We heard that group name checked a minute ago. That's the group which campaigns for uh, an alternative to monarchy, a democratic alternative. James, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Um, are, are you noticing a, a spike in support for your cause this week? Well, certainly, yeah. I mean, we've, we've certainly seen our uh, numbers on, on social media grow. Um, and we're seeing new members sign up as well. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a con- controversy like this is obviously good for us. Um, in that, you know, people start to, to Google us and to, to find our website and, and to start um, thinking about what we're saying. But, I mean, we should be quite clear from the start that the monarchy shouldn't be abolished because of, of one prince's behaviour. It should be abolished because it's, it's wrong in principle, and that will always be the most important thing for us. There is a financial question in the minds of many people texting us. James, you want to respond to some of this? Um, Mark and Derry says, uh, 22 grand a week for holiday is disgusting. It's time to abolish these freeloaders. I'm afraid I can't come on air today as I am working, unlike the monarchy. Sure. I mean, the, the British monarchy is one of the most wasteful and extravagant institutions in the world. Um, Joan Smith was absolutely right that um, the official costs that they come out with um, every summer exclude all kinds of costs. And they do this deliberately. I mean, it's a, it's a piece of a very deceitful um, um, spin. Um, we're actually um, looking at a figure of, of more like 300, actually. So Joan was um, was slightly off there. It's more like 300 million a year when you include all those extra costs. And, and this is something that, that the British public just aren't told. Doesn't the um, monarchy bring in a lot of money as well? That's what we're no, told. There's, Tourism there's all no evidence for that. Um, there, there's no way that, that the monarchy can, can bring in money. I mean, sometimes people talk about tourism, but actually... Um, royal attractions are way down on the list for most tourists. I mean, even uh, Visit Britain, the, um, the tourist agency, has said, look, there's absolutely no evidence at all that if you got rid of the monarchy, it would affect the, the tourism negatively. In fact, it might even have a positive effect because places like Buckingham Palace would be open all year round rather than just a few weeks when, when the Queen's in, uh, in Balmoral. So it's the buildings that bring in the money rather than people in the buildings? It's, it's the buildings, it's the history, it's the heritage. You know, people are interested in, in the history of monarchy. That's absolutely fine. And many Republicans are as well. Um, that, that's not an issue. But, but you're right, it's not the people who happen to be in there on a particular day. Um, you know, tourists aren't coming here because they might uh, catch a, a glimpse of Prince Andrew. They're coming here because of, of all the other amazing things that, that every part of the UK has to offer. This, this question of tourism is very, very interesting because it's the argument that's most often made that, they, that the royal family brings tourists to this country. The country in the world which has the most tourists is France, which has been a, a republic for nearly 150 years. France gets roughly 89 million tourists a year and the UK gets about 30 million. And there are only two monarchies in the top 10 countries in the world, according to the UN World Tourist Organization. Only two monarchies appear in the top 10 most visited countries in the world. So I think you can see that this is actually a myth. 
Megan Armand says the royal family should be given vouchers as they are the biggest welfare scroungers in the country. Florence, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Wendy. Hi, Florence. Are you losing pride in the royal family? No. I would never lose pride in my royal family. Simply because we have the most conscientious and loyal woman sitting on our throne. And, and that's the view of a lot of people, that no matter what Prince Andrew might or might not have done over the years, uh, the Queen is a separate case, Florence. Yes, the Queen, like any other mother, cannot be held responsible for what their children grow up to do. How do you feel about Prince Andrew today? The way I felt about him yesterday. No change at all? No change at all. And the stories coming back about his friendship with uh, with a man convicted of child sexual offences and continuing that friendship with him afterwards, that doesn't change your perspective on him? No, William, at the end of the day, we all pick up friends as we go along through life. Some good, some indifferent for us. But you can't always be judged on what friends do. Florence, thank you very much. Raymond, Hi. Good afternoon, William. Good afternoon, Raymond. What, what, what's your take on this? Well, now, you see, whenever you are getting people on to talk, yeah. you know what you want to do? See those couple before that lady there? If it was me, I would be saying to them before they get started right, excuse me, what record have you of fighting in wars? The like of, uh, you mentioned this guy flying all over the world, costing away a lot of money. Uh, how much did it cost him for, for to fly a helicopter around the Falkland Islands during the war? Uh, was any of them, was any of them uh, in any wars or any of these people that make the... Well, we'll put that point to Joan Smith. Joan, that's the other side of the story. Um, I think that's complete nonsense. The, and it's, it's actually yeah, a free see, speech, no it's a free speech issue, you see, because, because those of us who oppose an, a, 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 a hereditary monarchy have as much right to make our case as the people who are, who, who are in favour of it. I'd, I don't suggest that this gentleman shouldn't come on the radio and talk about his views, but we are entitled to make a political case about why we should have an elected head of state. Raymond, thank you very much. Uh, we can also me, William. Oh, okay, go ahead, Raymond. Before you go. Yeah, go ahead. I would like to point it out to the, the gist of all this nonsense. That I, I think that I know nothing about Prince Andrew or anybody else. Well, we're but, finding out a lot more as we go, aren't we? Well, the, the one thing I'm gleaning from this is the people that's coming on talking from London Derry and one thing or another, they have um, uh, convicted already for whatever this thing as he's getting accused of. I don't think we've had anybody on from London Derry. Oh, there was a guy from London Derry was on. I'm not sure, Raymond, but thank you very much and thanks for the interviewing advice. Much appreciated. Uh, we can also speak with, uh, this is a wonderful name, Thomas Mace Archer Mills. Yes, that is a triple barreled name. He is the chair of the British Monarchist uh, Society. Thomas, good afternoon to you. Yes, good afternoon, William. How are you? How are you feeling today with all of these scandal headlines about royalty again? Well, I, you say again, and to be honest with you, nothing for me has changed. And it's something that we all know that Prince Andrew, of course, is is always someone who has questionable judgment. But we can't take away the good parts and brand the whole entire royal family for the actions of one member of the family. There's so much good that comes out that when something bad happens, everyone wants to crucify them. And I don't think that's fair and I don't think that's right. Thomas, people have been asking who paid for the uh, £22,000 a week ski chalet. Well, the £22,000 would be a mixed match depending on, of course, the question will come up about royal security. But a lot of the families, well, a lot of the members of the family, when they go on holiday, have to pay their own way. When the Queen wanted to go on holiday to the islands in Scotland, she chartered a yacht because we don't have one for her anymore. So she paid out of her private money to take her family on a fortnight jaunt around the Scottish Isles. Members of the royal family do have to pay a lot of their own expenses. Where do they get the money from, Thomas? Well, a lot of the money that does come to them actually is through their own private workings or investments some money is actually given by Her Majesty the Queen from her private earnings. Pri- mean, private earnings, investments and 
commercial earnings or, or state money? Well, no. State money goes to the palace. That's, it goes to be distributed for the various different areas of which are, a, are official engagements, official travel, official things which actually pertain to the palace and the people supporting Her Majesty in her capacity as the head of state of the United Kingdom, Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Thomas, what would it take for you to lose pride in the monarchy? Lose pride in the monarchy? I'd have to lose pride in myself and my country before I'd even lose pride in my royal family. You couldn't do it? No, I couldn't do it. Nothing they could do could make you lose pride in them? Well, no, because we can't group it all together. There's different facets and factions that run within the royal family. So it is grossly unfair to say, I'm going to lose pride in the whole institution based on a few members that contribute or, as the Republicans say, don't contribute to any sort of ideology behind what monarchy stands for. Uh, so, James Gray, no, no matter what happens to individual members of the royal family, for Thomas at least, uh, the institution of monarchy is, it seems, hermetically sealed from criticism or, or from a lack of pride. Well, I, I think there are always going to be people, always going to be royalists, who, who won't take any criticism at all. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it's, it's the first thing I, I said today, which is that, that this is about the, the principle of monarchy and whether you support that or not. And we simply believe that there, there's no um, there's no defence of the hereditary hereditary principle at the heart of, um, of our uh, system of politics. And we haven't even begun to talk about the political interference um, of, of the Queen and the Prince of Wales. Um, the Guardian has been trying to see 27 letters written by the Prince of Wales uh, for 10 years, just a sample of the letters that he writes to ministers behind the scenes without our knowledge, pushing his pet projects. Um, and, we, and, and the government actually changed the law so that the, the family would be excluded from Freedom of Information Act requests. So we're not even allowed to know what kind of political influence the family has. I mean, the secrecy which surrounds this institution really is a disgrace in a democratic country. Uh, Joan, we've had Labour politicians like Jack Straw saying there's no interference. Members of the royal family, senior members like Prince Charles, make their views clear in private, and that's where their views should remain, in private. But they're not interfering, they're not shaping government policy. But they're not making their views known as private citizens, that's the point. If you or, you or I write to the Queen or write to Prince Charles and say, hey, you know, I'm not very keen on you know, you know, that, that you're doing this or that, or, or sorry, write to, write to the Prime Minister or write to our MP saying that, they're not going to invite us round for a private chat and, and, you know, and, and, and take it very seriously be lucky to get even an acknowledgement that, that this family uses its position to get access and we don't know what kind of influence that, 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 that they have behind the scenes and I don't think that's acceptable I don't think that the son of the, 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 the head of state should have any particular influence on, on policy in this country. Uh, one text here without a name on it says that they make all of these shows about benefit cheats and how much they cost the country. How about the truth on the biggest grinders of them all? Uh, the royals. Um, and uh, someone else had been made, making that point earlier. Um, William uh, says, Ronnie, give them a break. At least they've fought for their country. Sheila and Lauren says, the Queen is amazing, but I feel Prince Andrew in particular has been a loose cannon. Norman, good afternoon. How are you doing, Norman? Good afternoon, William. Good to talk to you, William. Norman. I have lost faith a long time ago. If you go right back to Princess Margaret, marriage breakdown scandal, Diana, marriage breakdown scandal, Prince Andrew, marriage breakdown scandal, and then you've Prince Harry running about naked in Las Vegas. You've the Duke of Edinburgh, he's got foot and mouth disease because he's always putting his foot on it. And now we have this scandal with Andrew again. And what Mervyn says is right. The money it's costing to keep these people in luxury. £4,000 a night in New York for William and Kate in a hotel room. And then we have these in skiing in Switzerland. They're just a burden on the state. And Norman, I do. Norman, you William, don't expect the future king to stay in a and b when he goes to New York, do you? Well, when we have people stand at food banks, William... When we're pensioners that can't even afford to heat their homes, I think the austerity needs to go from the top down, not from the bottom up. Norman, thank and you very I much. I know jo what I'd do, William. Yes, Send ahead. them all to the Tara Oh, Norman, thank you. 
Uh, Joan, am I right in saying the Queen has yet to visit a, a food bank? Um, I don't take a deep that breath closely. after that. I, yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I don't follow her engagements that closely. What I would say is that um, on the occasion that I met her, what struck me was that the people who were waiting to be introduced to her were very anxious. And I think if you're the head of state, you could actually be somebody who people were excited to meet. You could be a warm person who puts people at their ease. And that wasn't the case at all when I met the Queen. And when I was introduced to her, I very politely said hello and smiled. And um, the Queen looked absolutely shocked and cut me dead. I mean, she did not reply. She moved on to the next person because there is a protocol that you're not supposed to speak to them until they speak to you. Well, maybe and she'd heard I've... maybe she'd heard you'd turned down an MBE. Well, but even so, uh, I didn't ask to have her as my head of state, but she is. And so therefore, she has to be, she has to be, if she, if she accepts the role of head of state, she has to be the head of state for everybody, whether she likes our political views or not. Yes, I turned down an MBE. I don't like the honour system as it stands. But I am a citizen of this country. I'm proud of this country. And I would like a head of state who was actually polite to me as I was to her and actually represented my values, which are democratic and about equality and fairness and I think it's really it's really interesting that some of your callers are bringing up this question of things like food banks because it is shocking to me that at a time when when all over the UK food banks are, spr- are springing up people are worrying about how they're going to feed their children instead of having just a head of state you know uh, you know who, who goes to, uh, and, and represents us abroad and maybe takes a spouse or a partner or whatever and that's all we have to pay for we're having to pay for this whole edifice of the family it's ridiculous oh wait four five nine five 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 six seven Jan, hello. Hello, William. I just want to second what that lady's just said there, every word of it was true. I, I, I would be a kind of a royalist myself in a sense, but I mean, the money that they destroy is unbelievable. And you're talking there again about uh, MBEs and what I hate the word. And I can tell you now, I think the Queen's very good at sanctioning people for to get these MBEs or OBs. I'd like to know the procedures here. Because um, it's ridiculous, some of the people that stitch these things up. I mean, it's unbelievable, uh, people who get these MBEs and OBEs and all the rest, BEs. I think it's scandalous. There shouldn't be no such a thing. I think she, she, she wastes more money than enough on nonsense. Jan, thank you. Uh, Thomas, can I put this point, really gather some of these points together, that maybe there could be more pride and more security uh, for the future? of the monarchy if there was a revolutionary change in the way that members of the royal family approach life. Something more like a, you know, some people have talked about a Scandinavian kind of of monarchy. I I don't mean a monarchy on the cheap, but certainly giving a moral example during difficult times of austerity rather than taking yourself off to £22,000 a week ski holidays. We're already seeing a more streamlined royal family and it was brought to the forefront in the Queen's Diamond Jubilee when it wasn't the whole family on the balcony, like at the Queen's birthday parade. It was simply Her Majesty, the next in line, and the heir. That was it. Those three people with their spouses. That is the future of the monarchy. We are going more streamlined. We're not seeing this huge royal family to to put out the, the, uh, I guess, misconception that everyone is living off the state. And which is, is simply, I'm sorry, not the truth at all. There's 15 I, I members of the family who are, who, are, who are living off the state. 15 members of the royal family, 15 working royals, and they're all funded by the public. Well, let's look and see what actually the Queen pays for her own out of what she gets. Well, not very much, because it costs us 300 million a year. You've been listening to Talkback. I'll see you tomorrow.